Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to another video series by Ratchet and Wrenches. And today we're gonna be uh, we're gonna start working on this uh, Audi. It's a 2001 Audi A4 with a 1.8 liter engine. And as some of you may know, it's got the the timing belt has snapped on this. Therefore, we suspect that we, at the very least we have uh, bent valves. Uh, hopefully, no damage to the top of the pistons has uh, has been done. So, uh, so yeah, we're gonna be removing the cylinder head for further investigation. You know, since the timing belt is already snapped on this, we don't need to put the car in the service position to get to all the tensioners and stuff. But if you want to see how to do that, you can. I have a video series, uh, you know, on the timing belt replacement for this engine. So you can just look into my channel and uh, find that one out. It's also, there's a separate video for removing the front bumper on a Passat, but they're all fairly similar, uh, similar procedure. And to, to remove this, I'm going to basically just try my hardest to cut corners, you know. <laughs> I'm going to... Try to do this the fastest and easiest way, which is to instead of removing all these connectors and whatnot, uh, I'm just gonna disconnect the, the the bolts that hold the intake manifold to the cylinder head. And in the back, there's gonna be a coolant flange and a combi valve, like guy right there. We're gonna remove those. We're gonna remove all these vacuum lines. Uh, so this aside, and then we're gonna try and disconnect the. Uh, let me get more light here. Gonna try to remove the cylinder head with the exhaust manifold still on there and we're gonna try to disconnect it from you know those three bolts that attach our exhaust manifold to the top of the turbo we're gonna try to get those we're probably it's gonna be very hard to get to but I think if we get this heel shield out these uh, these pipes out, out of the way we might be able to okay but uh, for starters we're gonna remove that uh, coolant reservoir then we're gonna go around and see if we can uh, probably disconnect this coolant line from the back of that coolant flange in the back and then uh, try to see if we can disconnect this intake manifold and just push it back, okay? Okay, in order to remove this coolant reservoir, there are three Phillips head screws and then we're gonna undo this clamp and there's gonna be a connector underneath it too. We're gonna undo that connector. We're gonna leave this hose on. There's a hose back underneath here and then just, we're just gonna push it back to the side, okay? And here's the connector I was telling you about. There we go. Now we're just gonna put this back here. Okay, so before we disconnect this coolant line from back of the, the cylinder head where the coolant, or there's a coolant flange, I'm gonna remove this bolt so it frees it up once we remove it, disconnect it from the, the plastic uh, coolant flange at the back of the cylinder head, okay? And this one bolt is a 10 millimeter, uh, it's gonna be a 10 millimeter, uh, it's gonna require a 10 millimeter socket. There we go. Okay, it's gonna be hard showing you uh, where this is, uh, where this goes, but uh, here's the top bolt that we'll need to remove. And the bottom bolt is right underneath the pipe. So I've got a long extension bar on my uh, quarter inch ratchet that's gonna help me just reach from there and uh, get to them. So it's gonna help to, to have the right tools for the job, okay? These bolts aren't held in with a lot of torque, so once you get them loose, you can just remove them by hand, okay? Just when you move things back here, when you move them around, just uh, take care not to disconnect any vacuum lines, okay? Because uh, then you might run into trouble later, okay? There's one. Okay, next we're going to remove this wiring harness uh, that goes from our uh, camshaft position sensor to all the injectors all the way back. Uh, these are pretty, and these uh, Connectors on these are really easy to, to take out. These are these uh, little metal clip, clips that are holding them in. You just press on them and you pull on the connector and you can take it out. Okay, so we're gonna do that for all these and then uh, looks like there's zip ties here. And we're gonna cut those and then get this wire harness out of the way. Okay, you know, actually it looks like there's uh, this uh, wire harness comes out with the bracket. So you actually don't need to cut the zip tie. You just take them out all like this and there we go and there's the last one and I'll just set this aside back here okay next I'm gonna remove our uh, oil dipstick okay next gonna try uh, to go after all the bolts that hold our intake manifold to our cylinder head uh, looks like there's gonna be two three four five ten Ten bolts that are holding this in. We're gonna start actually from those two in the middle because they are also attached to this bracket that connects our oil dipstick tube to our intake manifold. So we're gonna get those two bolts out of the way, see if we can uh, wiggle that bracket or this uh, dipstick tube with that bracket out of the way, okay? 
Okay, and the trick to being able to get to those bolts without removing anything else, like this uh, wiring harness, uh, the, this uh, f fuel rail with the, the fuel injectors, is to use a swivel end, uh, long extension for your ratchet, and it's also going to require a, a five millimeter hex bit. Okay, the smaller this bit, the better, because uh, that way you can you have an easier time maneuvering it. And if you could get this in a quarter inch size, that's even better, because this is a three eighths. And if you had this in a quarter inch size, you're going to be, uh, it's going to make life your life a lot easier. Uh, the real problem is going to be when you go to put the, these bolts back and putting them back without uh, cross-threading them. But I'll show you when we get there. But for removal, it should be easy because there isn't a whole lot of torque holding these in. Okay? Just make sure when you put them in, put them inside the so these bolts, that it's properly seated. It's seated all the way in. Because if it's, you don't seat it in all the way, it's going to, you're going to strip out the inside of it potentially since you're going at an angle and then uh, you are not going to be a happy camper. Okay? And once you get them loose, you can uh, just use your uh, bit to uh, get them out the rest of the way. Okay? Okay, now I'm going to see if I can pull on this solid dipstick tube. I don't like to, to use pliers for this. Okay, here's a look at our uh, oil dipstick tube and our bracket. You know, you should be able to take this bracket out with just uh, push, pushing these little tabs on this out, but it looks like someone had used glue <laughs> to attach this to this bracket, so that's why we couldn't get it out. Okay, next I'm going to take out all the other bolts. Uh, for two of these bolts that are on the corners, on the left and the right side, you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket, but uh, yeah, again, these are not in, not held in with a lot of torque. Okay, now the two 10 millimeter bolts. Actually, the two on the sides are these two 10 millimeter nuts, so that's what you need to remove. Okay, so with all those uh, nuts and bolts out of the way, now it's time to see if we can uh, push this out of the way. We would need to get this far from the, the cylinder head, about three inches. The only thing that has complicated this a little bit is these studs that come out of the cylinder head. And also, as you know, this is kind of sitting on top of the cylinder head instead of just directly to the side. So we need to get it up and back, uh, you know, three inches probably up and then three or four inches back to uh, have enough clearance to take the cylinder head off later. Okay. Okay, you know what? I think there's plenty of play in this to, to be able to pull this off. There we go. All right, able to get this out. Uh, it's gonna be tight getting the cylinder head out, but still beating uh, beats the hell out of removing all everything here and uh, then removing the intake manifold. Okay. Next, we come around to this side, and it's time to remove these things uh, that attach uh, that are attached to the rear of the cylinder head uh, and our valve cover gasket. We're gonna first start with this pipe. Uh, there's a clamp here we need to remove. There's gonna be uh, another five millimeter uh, hex bit. Uh, another five millimeter uh, hex headed bolt here and another one here Then there's another clamp here then we'll be able to get this top pipe out of the way okay and these clamps are aftermarket but if uh, yours has the factory ones out you're just gonna have to cut them okay just gonna hopefully pull on this this will come out. There we go. There we go. This one's free. Okay, next uh, I'm going to remove this uh, combi valve that atta that's attached to this pipe. And that is held into the cylinder head by three, uh, again, three five millimeter uh, bolts that you will need to use a uh, Allen key or a hex bit socket. And Allen key is a lot better in this case because there's really no space back there. So if you can get this in there like this. And there's no torque on them really, so you are going to have a much easier time with an Allen key. Okay, and then we're going to come back here and then we're going to remove this bolt, this bolt. Then there's four 10 millimeter bolts that hold this heat shield in. Then there's also two 10 millimeter, uh, two bolts, I don't know what size they are yet, but uh, there's one here and one here that, it had, that are attaching this, uh, this oil supply line for your turbo uh, to to your cylinder head, to the to a bracket that attaches that's connected to your cylinder head. So we're gonna remove all of that, and then we're gonna be able to get this out of the way, plus the heat shield. Okay.
Okay, yeah, these bolts are in a really, really tight spot and you want to make sure you don't strip out the inside of them because they're going to be really hard to... Uh, that mistake will be really hard to, uh, <laughs> to remedy, okay? Good grip on this. And someone's been here before and put some really monkey torque on these bolts back here, which is really pissing me off. Third one. Okay, next we're going to remove these. Uh, these are actually 8 millimeter bolts for this heat shield, okay? Here's the last one and here comes this heat shield. Okay, next we can uh, get this combi valve out of, out of the way, but there's a vacuum line that goes to this that you should probably mark because uh, as you go to remove the cylinder head and move things around there, it's going to fall down somewhere. So you want to keep track of that and the way and, uh, t and also the, the where it, how it's routed, okay, through this maze back here, okay? So just twist and pull on that and it should come out. There's also going to be a gasket for your combi valve, which is, if not on your combi valve, it's going to be on your cylinder head or it has probably fallen down somewhere. So you want to keep track of that too. Now we just twist and pull on this. Oh, crap. Some of you might have seen that coming, but... <laughs> I didn't. It's supposed to be rubber, but it's hard as plastic now. There's something to put on the parts list. <laughs> okay, next there's uh, two six millimeter bolts that hold this oil supply line in. Okay, so next we would need to get to this coolant flange, the plastic coolant flange that's at the back of the cylinder head. There is uh, two brackets that are on, attached to it. Uh, one is for this uh, oil line that goes to your turbo. The other one is for this, uh, this hose that goes to your valve cover. Valve cover. Uh, so you remove, you would have to first remove two 10 millimeter nuts and this two come loose and then you would have to remove two 10 millimeter uh, bolts uh, that would hold in the coolant flange, okay? All right, now here's a look at your coolant flange. Uh, these, all, you know, a lot of these, you know, if you have a Passat or an Audi that has a 1.8 liter, and you are leaking coolant from the back of the cylinder head or it looks like it's leaking from the back of the engine it's probably this guy these crack all the time they get really really tiny cracks on them and then they start leaking a little bit uh, this is where your coolant temperature sensor goes this is where your coolant hose goes and this is sitting at the back of the cylinder head like this okay so in order to remove it you would need to remove two 10 millimeter nuts that we talked about and then two 10 millimeter bolts that attach it to the cylinder head okay Okay, so the first, the two nuts that are holding in uh, these uh, brackets for this oil line and this top, top, top pipe. And the top bolt might be a little tricky to get to, but and actually it's not that tricky at all. And here's the setup I'm using. Just a little extension with the swivel end and a 10 millimeter socket on my quarter inch ratchet. All right, here's the first one. And now as you can see, once you get this out of that, uh, that, that uh, bolt, this is pretty loose and it's detached from your cylinder head, okay? Just don't pry on this too much because you don't want to get a leak on this. This goes to your turbo, supplies oil to your turbo. Now I'm just going to remove the, the lower bolt that holds that coolant flange in and then that coolant flange should be loose. Make sure you have a catch pan underneath just in case you get a leak, even though we drained the radiator already. There might be still coolant in the system back here. Okay, and this is how the bolts that attach the coolant flange to your uh, cylinder head are supposed to look like. Those brackets for the oil, oil line and this hose to your uh, valve cover, they attach to the top of these. So these attach it to your, uh, they attach the coolant flange to your cylinder head and then the brackets go on top of these and then the nuts hold the, the brackets in place, okay? And then there is a metal clip that's holding the, the coolant hose to this coolant flange and we're gonna remove that with a small screwdriver, okay? Okay, and here's the, how the clip looks like that holds that uh, coolant hose to the coolant flange. There we go. All right, and here's our, uh, our coolant flange that's in there. And it's probably the original one, so I'm definitely gonna replace it even though it may not look like it's leaking from, uh, from here. Okay, and actually you wanna make sure you get your, uh, the seal that's on this coolant flange so it's not still on the cylinder head if you're just replacing your coolant flange. And in order to take this uh, coolant temperature sensor, you just press on this clip. 
you just pull on this clip and uh, when you remove the clip, then you can replace your coolant temperature sensor, okay? All right, definitely gonna remove the, and replace this uh, seal for your cooler, for our coolant temperature sensor, if not the whole coolant temperature sensor, okay?